G'day guys, Kipper here. Uh, it's a beautiful morning at the power line track. Uh, I've just driven the Unimog here, or the Bushmog. Um, yeah, I'm just gonna do a little film clip and uh, just answer some questions that you guys have been asking me. And um, yeah, here we go. Right, so first question I always get asked, economy, fuel economy. Uh, probably about the 23 to 30 litres per 100 with the camper on the back. Without the camper, I was getting probably about 18 to 23 litres per 100. So the engine is a 5.7 litre turbo diesel, inline six. So I get people asking me about the winch. Uh, it can pull about six and a half tonne. So, I mean, it is a pretty beefy winch. It is a mechanical winch too, so it runs off a PTO. So in that case, I can run it all day without it getting hot like an electric winch probably would. No, it doesn't have air conditioning. The air conditioner is that sunroof up the top there. <laughs> Stick your head out like a dog and just enjoy the ride. <laughs> so the weight of the vehicle is actually tray bed, just under seven ton already. And then I've put the camper on, that's about two, two and a half ton, um, two and a half ton probably loaded. So all up, it's about 10 ton, I'd say, just under 10 ton. So it is quite a heavy rig. I mean, if you're going across Salt Lakes, you ought to be pretty careful, as I found out. It is a lot different than driving a Hilux. It is a lot wider, uh, a lot heavier, but it is a lot more capable in a, in a fair few more areas, so. Anyway, guys, I'm gonna go for a bit of a uh, cruise, so um, I might do a bit more filming once I'm back at the uh, workshop or shed, and uh, yeah, enjoy. As you can see underneath the rear of the Unimog we've got uh, four to axles, they come out like factory. It also has uh, four wheel drive and diff locks front and back. So with these portal axles it lifts the diff up about 500 mil off the ground. Um, so yeah you've got heaps and heaps of clearance under there. Now people always ask what kind of license you need for these trucks. It is a medium rigid license you need and it has a synchro gearbox which means it changes gears just like a car you don't have to double clutch but if you're going to go for your license i would recommend going for your hr with the crash gearbox it's about the same price and you can drive uh, bigger trucks if you want to another thing i like about this unimog is uh, when you go to service it so you've basically got two oil filters and uh, two fuel filters um, the oil filters actually cost less than a, uh, a Hilux or a, you know, a Toyota or whatever, so it's actually not that expensive to service. Um, yeah, it will use more oil just to change the oil out, but yeah, no, I just find it very easy to do, um, quite simple, and it uses the old school cartridge filters too. Next, next would be uh, the top speed. How fast can I go on road? Um, 90 kilometers an hour. With these tyres you could probably push to 92, 93, but that's uh, revving it quite hard. You can sit on 90 all day long, um, but with the factory Unimog tyres, they're a bit smaller, uh, you would be sitting on probably 85, pushing 88 kilometers an hour. So I'll start talking about the uh, what that comes out with in the army. This is factory, this scrub bar, I've actually built that myself, so that's not factory. Light bar obviously is an add-on. Uh, we've got the exhaust which is an add-on normally it goes underneath the train across the other side 
but I've done the exhaust like that just to let it breathe a bit better and also uh, the spare tyre wheel carrier I kind of got rid of that and I put a, a fuel tank in there uh, the fuel tank was in the road um, of the exhaust or either way so I have basically just made plumb the exhaust up beside the cab put a bit of a heat shield around it and uh, yeah Bob Gianni so now you can see that uh, the tyre size is a lot different as I said earlier to the original Army tyres, uh, these ones are 395.85 with a 20 inch rim, and Michelin's, and they're beadlock rims. So what I had to do when I had the first setup, I uh, had a, a secondary battery which I wanted mounted underneath the tray, but in order to do that, I needed to mount this box a little bit lower just to fit the second secondary one in. And um, after I did that, I had the Red Arc charger um, charge this up from 24 to 12 volts. So I had 12 volt uh, deep cycle on board and I could just plug my fridge in, plug whatever I wanted to really. So normally I have my six horsepower outboard just here and I'll hook it up to a uh, pulley just up there and uh, that's how I lower it down because it's quite high up. If I'm feeling strong, I might just click my ladder here walk on up, grab it off with my big ass muscles and just uh, flex down to the boat yard. I've got my gas bottle here, it's plumbed up and it basically goes to the other side of the tray. Then I've got a generator which I actually got gifted to me and this, this generator just mounts in here if I ever do need it. I've made a little box up for it. These, what you see here, twist locks. These twist locks are actually off C container mounts. Um, so I've got four of these, and that's actually how I built the frame around this thing. It's like an exos, exo, ooh, exoskeleton to keep it kind of uh, away from all the bush bashing. The camper has aluminium panels and a steel frame, steel frame on the outside and also steel frame on the inside. And it's been triple insulated. Next we have the uh, stainless steel tanks. These stainless steel tanks are 80 litres each. Now this Unimog has had a uh, lift kit put in it, a 3 inch um, coil increase. So we've got single coils in the front and then on the back we've actually got double coil. So we've got two coils in the back and then we've got Iron Man shock absorbers. The jerry can holders, they were always there for the military. So here we have the back of the Unimog. We have a uh, ladder underneath. We have a three and a half meter slide out drawer. We have uh, LED lights, as well as the uh, brake and indicators up the top there. Underneath the truck, we've actually got a uh, dual motor Sherpa winch mounted to my old man's barbecue plate that I oxyed up and welded. Underneath, I think you might be able to see it, but there's a reverse camera just sitting there because um, I am known to hit stuff even when I'm going forward. The whole camper is lockable on one key, so I can go around and just lock the whole thing up. So inside the cab we have a uh, Hilux seat, and it's uh, pinched out of my old man's uh, car over there. He still hasn't realized that it's his because I put like a gorilla skin seat cover on it. Next we uh, insulated the uh, floor pans. We have a uh, satellite odometer speedometer which you can get from uh, super cheap uh, for about a hundred hundred plus dollars we have also mounted uh, some cigarette outlets there and then just behind the seats we've got uh, two speakers a subwoofer and two amps so we can turn it up to drown out the noise of the unimog because it is quite a noisy deviant we have a screen for our reverse camera we have our UHF radio and we have our head unit we have our gears, we got this gear here to engage the PTO, which is the winch. And then we've got our gear stick, which is obviously eight gears. Normally you take off in third, um, maybe fourth if you're going downhill, see how you go with that one. First gear is kind of like uh, jump in, start your car, put it in first gear, let it go down the driveway, come in, put the kettle on, make yourself a cup of tea, come back out again, hop in the truck, and uh, you're still not out the gate. But it is really good at uh, rock crawling. 
Next gear stick is the reverse and forward lever. So you've got eight gears forwards and you've got eight gears reverse. We have our throttle control. And that's the roof. So that's your little pop top roof, the air conditioning. You got those little levers there, you just kind of twist those. So here we have the uh, guards, the front guards there after market. So on this side we've got the winch. Normally there's my spare tire that just sits here and that the winch just kind of chains it up and just kind of sits it nicely there. That winch is a one ton winch and the tires weigh uh, 250 kilo with the rim. So it's more than enough. And that also does my outboard for the other side. This uh, fuel tank, I actually bought a uh, military fuel tank and then I uh, didn't have anywhere to mount it. So this is where the existing spare tire was. Moved the tire up to there, put the fuel tank here, move the exhaust um, because if I was going to put the fuel tank here I'd have to move the exhaust which was a bit of a you know. We've got the factory toolboxes and just under here we've got the uh, gas outlets. So just under here we have my ladder. So you've just got your little padlock here. That undoes. Just like that. I normally just put it just there otherwise I lose it. underneath, that drops down and you pretty much can access anywhere with it. Got uh, the strip lighting and also uh, we've got some LEDs up there that shine into the actual cab and uh, outside as well. So I've got all my oils for my Unimog, any oil I need. I've also got uh, portal hub seals and bearings. Um, one kit for the front, one kit for the back. Then I've got all my belts and uh, hoses, spare hoses, just in case I uh, blow any on the track. Uh, jumper leads as well. Um, little fry extinguisher, and I normally carry my flame torch in here. This can actually um, put uh, fit about two bikes in there. We normally go around with two bikes. And then this is my actual uh, computer setup. So I carry it around my computer with me. I've got the screen inside. And um, that was a bit of a dick around. I actually uh, had to set up a little uh, relay system to turn it on so I didn't have to press the button. Obviously it's in the cage, it's a bit hard to press the button. So yeah, made up a little circuit to uh, turn the inverter on and then uh, about three seconds later we'll turn on the computer as well. So as you can see there's actually a whirly bird mounted on the roof. That actually draws in air uh, into my workshop. So the workshop gets a bit of dust in it. Um, it compresses the cab or the camper I guess you could say um, drags all the, the dust through here so it works like a bit of a filter and then these black boxes you're probably wondering what they do and uh, I'm about to show you I think it's actually a pretty cool little setup so the black boxes well this is the other side of the wall inside the camper ow and uh, then we got these chairs here we got the table here and we got another chair here. Now these are all handmade by uh, me, my dad and Lauren. We all put in a bit of time for it and um, yeah they turned out absolutely mint. I'm just one of the highlights of this camper. Absolutely stoked with it. So they just slide out of the wall. Slide them back in like so. Tuck away quite nicely. And then that's the other side of the computer system. So I just plug in my screen, I plug in my speaker, got the PowerPoint as well, and all my USB ports. That actually uh, is an extension from the computer. So I can just plug in my USB or a hard drive and watch the movies on the, uh, on the big screen. And this is the light switch, is, not the light switch, is the inverter switch. So one's for the uh, inverter, and the next switch is for my computer. And that just basically activates a timer relay and the other one activates the inverter relay just behind here you can see where I've mounted the computer uh, screen so you can see it just there and then we've got the uh, oh it's pretty hot in here uh, insulation's very good and then we've got some rubber just here so now I'll show you what it looks like when we're all opened up so here we go this is the uh, lockable door personnel door Here's the ladder again, that just kind of clips on the edge anywhere you want to go. It's just a Bunnings ladder cut in half and then I've actually spray painted it black, it was aluminium. Made up some little brackets for it and uh, there you go. So um, yeah, basically, so pop the roof up. I've got 
two safety latches just here. Undo one of those. And then you undo the other one on the other side. With the roof, I've actually wired it up to a little gate remote. So now you can see the pop tops all the way up. So you can basically, at the highest point, stand in there. I'm six foot three and put your hands up, you still won't touch the roof. So I've actually wired these uh, two actuators up, which I'm about to show you in a second, to a little gate remote. And that's basically the little control board for them there. I've uh, bought two, one to use at all times, and the other one's actually just to back up as a spare, just in case it blows, otherwise you're pretty screwed if you, your roof won't go up when you're out bush. And then that's it, fully popped up there as well. So these are the uh, actuators here, all the way up there. I can't remember what size they were, I think they're about 600 mil or something like that, 500 mil extension. And they're good for 150 each, I think, from memory. Now, don't quote me on that, but basically it's enough just to hold this whole roof up. So I only need one of these, but I've actually put two either side. Just in case one does fail, it would make an awful headache. I'll show you all the light switches. I've, uh, I've made an absolute uh, cream of this. So we've got our uh, 12 volt uh, meter. So that will tell us how much voltage we got in the batteries at all times. Um, it gets quite bright. So I've actually put it on a switch so you can turn it off because this is where your head goes. Then I've got the, uh, oh yeah, that's the uh, little USB outlets for your phone. Next is your uh, rear strip light. So that will turn that one on and off so you can lie in bed and you can read. And then you've got your centre one, which kind of lights up the kitchen area. That's your kitchen area just down here. And uh, then we've got, yes, like I said before, you've got your, uh, in, your inverter. Yep. And your fan. Oh, yeah, that's right. I wired that up to a fan and a computer. So it'll actually turn on when you turn your fan on. And when you turn your computer on, it will turn your fan on. Now, this is all the strip lighting around the top here. All the cables are hidden in this uh, top hat here as well. So it's nice and out of the road. We've got, you know, outlets, wiring everywhere. These ones, uh, they do. Oh, yeah, that's right. They're for your door lights. So you can kind of tilt those out. If you have a kitchen area out there, you've got your little LED lights, nice warm white, just to keep the bugs off you. Um, and then we've got another one. Yeah, that's right, we've got another one over this side as well. Now, these two other switches, they're actually for uh, two floodlights on the outside. So if you want, there, I'll turn them on now and see if we can see them. So that's the bad boys just there. And they really do crank some light out. So this is the canvas work here. Um, I've got a guy in, uh, oh, where was he, Kenwick Link? No, he's further than that. I've got a guy to make this canvas up. Um, also, uh, Darren as well. Big thank you for making this up as well. Um, it's all waterproof, the windows. Um, all stitched uh, with waterproof stitching. And it's got mozzie mesh on it, on the outside. And then on the inside, it's actually got canvas, so if it's raining, you can just zip it up and stay away from the elements. Just here, we've got our uh, solar panel, 350 watt solar panel, and that charges up our two deep cycle batteries. So the bed we've got is actually a um, just under a queen size. Uh, we've got it from Clark Rubber and had to cut, I think, oh, just a small amount off it, just so it didn't rub into these actuators too much. The roof is actually mini orb you got it from a daily steel and that's all insulated underneath it as well so we built the shelving all underneath uh, with metal and then a wood finish we just kind of laid some ply on it and painted it all nicely the floor it's insulated as well and then we put uh, fake uh, wood floorboards down turned out real nice painted all the walls blue this is all lauren's color coding so she's pretty chuffed about this. Here we go. Here's the canvas. Unzip those. There you, there you go. There's your, there's your bloody beautiful view outside. Wherever you may be. And then, yeah, you can just let the air flow if it is a bit hot. And then uh, Lauren's uh, pick of the key 
ring uh, holder, I guess you'd call it. So we normally keep our um, winch remote there just in case and also our gate remote which is in my pocket and I better remember to uh, put it back. You can also lock the door from the inside. So this is actually lockable. You kind of give that a close and boom, there you go. No intruders can come get you. Um, yeah, until you want to let them. Maybe you feel a bit frisky and you want to let them in, who knows. Here we have the uh, deep cycle battery. So this first battery is connected to this one down here and that's connected in parallel so 12 volt but double the current so that 350 watt solar panel charges these batteries through this little center, uh, system here and this there's two batteries in here they're in series so that's 24 volts so they're only for starting the unimog and running the lights so they actually do charge these two 12 volt batteries as well. It's like a step down red arc system. And as I'm driving, it will be charging if it's uh, night time and the solar panel is not working. So yeah, that's always good to have like a backup of that as well. Here we have the auxiliary fuses. So I've left heaps of room for spares if I do need any. There's also fuses all through the Unimog as well in those uh, switches all behind there, there's fuses. So fuses coming out of our ears. This isolator here, this one is for the winch. So the winch up here, that's the isolator so no one can play with it um, unless I want them to. And this one here, that's for the uh, thousand watt inverter. And then this one's for like all the lighting, all the power, all the 12 volt supply. So if something really goes wrong, that's going to trip. So with the two 12 volt batteries, we normally have a enough power, I guess you'd say, to run two angles. We've only got the one in here at the moment. But um, yeah, it does definitely handle two angles. So all in all, I've been uh, absolutely wrapped with this Unimog. I've had it about oh, four years, probably about uh, two and a half of those with, uh, without the camper on the back. And uh, yeah, it's never let me down once. The uh, engine is solid. It's got about uh, 130,000 on the engine and it's had a fresh gearbox in it. So I think that gearbox has only done about probably 30 since I've owned it. If you are looking for a higher top speed, you can go to uh, Ben Nash and Mog Central and ask them about that. They do overdrive gearboxes or uh, higher speed axles. Um, you can just, the mods that you can do for these machines is just unreal, you know, bigger turbos, all sorts of awesome stuff. And uh, yeah, I just uh, absolutely love the thing if you're gonna, you know, spend the money and buy a uh, brand new Land Cruiser and do it up, I would kind of almost think again and just maybe have a look at one of these. Uh, the more you read into them, the more you, you kind of want to go for one. So um, yeah, I'd, I'd definitely recommend it to anyone. Anyway, thanks for, uh, thanks for watching and uh, yeah, I'll uh, see you around the tracks.